Okay, so in our previous episode, we were discussing how I had come to the conclusion that probate was something I wanted to explore and some of the challenges that I face. Let's continue. So the big question is this, how are ordinary agents just like us supposed to stand out in the overly crowded real estate space while living a great lifestyle without having to go broke or radically change what we're already doing? Probate is the answer and this series will show you how. I'm Anthony Nitz and welcome to the probate agent. I thought I thought back uh, as I was coming up with different things, and I was brainstorming and whiteboarding things out and stuff. And I thought back to when I was trying to get a job at a video editing company. And the reason I was trying to get the job at the video editing company because you know, long before I was in the real estate space, I, you know, I was looking for a job. I was looking for something cool to do and, and different and whatnot. And so I saw an ad in the newspaper. Yes, this was back when it was done in newspapers. And it said, you know, video editor will train, blah, blah, blah. You know, here's the here's the salary. Send your resume. So I sent my resume and I mean, boom, that day I was like on it. I sent my resume and uh, and when I sent it, I, you know, I waited a few days and stuff, didn't hear anything. I was sure they were going to call me. Gosh darn it. Well, I called and I called and I called and I called. And finally, and I called actually like, at, I don't know, 545 or something one day, just out of blue. I'm like, I wonder if anybody's still there. And I called, somebody answered. And it was, it happened to be the receptionist was still there for some reason. And I asked her, I go, you know, hey, look, you know, I sent my resume in, but I, I didn't get a response. You know, what happened? You know, and she said, uh, Anthony, you know, I appreciate it. She said, but here's the deal. We ran that ad for one day on a Sunday. We received 12 hundred resumes she said we have so many resumes sitting here we don't we don't even know where to start and I was like oh my gosh okay um <clears throat> all right well thanks for the info and what I did next was I had to th- I just had to think about it I go, okay how do I get to the top of that pile how do I get to the top oh I'm sure they would put a pizza on the top of that pile if they if they had one and so what I did was uh, on a Thursday, I went over and I found the local Pizza Hut delivery service, you know, and I walked in and I said, look, I need to have a this large, you know, whatever, everything pizza uh, delivered at 1140, I think is when I was having it delivered right before lunch. Right. And so I said, OK, I want I want this delivered over to here. And but I'm taping this on the top of the box. Guess what was taped on the top? It was my resume in a big blue envelope. I said, well, you know, they can't turn it down. So they delivered it. They came back a little bit later and the, um, the driver, the Pizza Hut driver hands me a business card. He says, here you go. The Pizza Hut, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the card that he handed me was for the uh, like the CEO of the company. And on the back, it said, call me Monday. Well, Monday came, I picked up the phone and I go, hi, this is Anthony. Yeah, I wanted to, oh, you're the guy who sent the pizza. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's me. Oh, hold on, hold on. You know, I forget what her name is, Karen or something. You know, she's waiting to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. So I spoke to her. Guys, 1,200 resumes. Did I get the job? No, I didn't get the job. But the point is, is I did something that was different out of the box to get on top of the list by sending a simple pizza. Nobody else sent them a pizza. Now, the reason I didn't get the job was because I never edited a video in my life at that time. Not a single one. And so what they ended up doing was they ended up um, hiring somebody who did have considerable more experience to me. But what it did was it put me 
in that second position. I was in number two out of 1,200. And yes, this all relates to probate, guys. I'm telling you this because you, you got to understand that some of the things I'm going to share with you is going to help you stand out and be that different person, okay? So yeah, I got into, I was number two out of 1,200 with no experience whatsoever. I mean, and they were considering hiring me, you know, because they could have hired me for a lot less than they hired the other guy, I'm sure. But in any case, and every time that I would talk to her, I, talk, I would run into her or I'd talk to her or something for whatever reason, you know, for a few years. And, you know, she would always bring up the pizza and made it stand out. So what I did with these attorneys was I said, you know, I got to make a plan. That worked with the with the video company. I got to do something like that. But here's the problem. There wasn't just one attorney. There's a lot. There's a lot of attorneys. So what I did was I built a list of every single attorney in the area that had the words estate, wills, trusts, probate, real estate, some other terms that I had you know determined might be a good match. And I came up with about a hundred of them. A hundred of them. Ugh. Can't send out a hundred pizzas. Okay. But what I did was I drew them all out on the map. I just took a map and I just drew it all out. You know, this is before Google Maps, guys, I know. Um, and what I did was I made a detailed route of all those offices so that I could maximize my time. And I could go out in the field. I know this is a strange concept these days, right? But I would go out in the field and I would visit as many of those offices as I can. But because they were routed out, I would do a bunch of offices in a very short amount of time. A lot of good news was that a lot of these were in the same building. Like they'd have the law building, you know, and eight of the people I was visiting were in that law building, you know. And so I started on my route. I would do about 25 to 35 a day. Yes, I know. It's actual work. Uh, it would take me a few hours. I would do this three to four days per week, every single week. Every single week, three to four days per week. And don't worry, that's not what I tell people. It's still a good idea. It, would, it definitely will get you a lot more, you know, faster leverage than, um, you know, some of the other techniques that we use now. But um, in doing what I did, you know, three to four days per week, every single day. Why would I, what else am I doing during the day? Nothing. I'm sitting around waiting for my listing appointments at night or for buyer showings or things like that. Go, uh, go out and and talk to these attorneys is what I told myself is just get up. No, I don't need to sit around and socialize with other real estate agents. Let's go. You know, so I did that. Um, and there was something interesting that I learned. If you visit the office while the attorney was in, once you were identified as a solicitor, you were practically and violently escorted out of the office. Get out! get out don't come back i mean you know they were like pretty brutal about it in some cases you know so some they weren't so bad but so i was like okay well that's interesting but something else that i figured out was that if i visited the office when the attorney wasn't there for some reason they were less uh, aggressive in pushing me out the door you know, and, and I think it was kind of that gatekeeper mentality. Oh, I'm I'm protecting the, the attorney. And that's what I'm doing. But, ah, but the attorney's not here. Okay, well, I, there's, I got nothing to lose if you, if you stand here in my lobby. Okay, whatever. So um, I started, so I kind of caught on to that. And I was like, oh, that's very interesting. And what I found out was that uh, if they had cases going, they were usually in court mid-morning and sometimes early afternoon. That's kind of mostly when they were in court if they had the cases. So I adjusted my route so that I was only going to attorney's offices mid-morning and early afternoon. And just went there when, they were, when, the, when the attorneys weren't there. Wait a minute, but Anthony, you're trying to talk to the attorneys. Why did you shift your focus to the gatekeepers? I'll tell you why. 
because the receptionist or personal assistant has a whole lot more influence than you think. So what I did was, first of all, when I did go to these offices, and I'm sorry, this is a, this is a key part. When I did go to the offices, I always showed up with a gift. Okay, this was this was a this was um, this was my form of the pizza. Okay, but again, I'm not dropping off a fifteen dollar pizza to everybody. Uh, I would show up with some sort of gift, and it would just be a little desk toy or some little tchotchke I would find somewhere where I could buy a whole bunch of them for a dollar a piece or something like that. It almost didn't matter. It didn't matter what it was because everybody likes a gift. And I would give it to the attorney, you know, uh, I, I would give one to the attorney and, um, you know, and, and I would always, uh, uh, the gatekeeper, I would give them a little something too sometimes. Um, and, and like I said, it was not extravagant, was not extravagant at all. You know, like a Christmas ornament, you know, a stress ball, something like that. But um, here's what the most important part was. It was always in an envelope or a box and it was never, ever flat, never, ever flat. Why? Because when you send the letters, that's a letter in a number 10 envelope, it's pre-printed, all that good stuff, the receptionist or assistant looks at that, immediately recognize, eh, junk mail, throws it in the trash. However, when you have a box or you have a package that has that's lumpy, the receptionist will almost never open it. Almost never, unless that attorney tells them, open everything for me, right? No, they will turn around and they will put it on the attorney's desk so that they have that in their hand. They get to open it. They didn't have a choice but to open it, right? Think about yourself. You get a package and, or even, I mean, I mean let's, let's go back to the number 10 letters. If there's, there's these companies that send out a, uh, they, they tape a nickel in there. And you get that envelope and this you'd recognize right away it's some sort of junk mail. But you feel that in oh, there's something in there. I need to know what that is. Right? So same thing, same concept. Okay. And when I did this, it always had uh ten business cards. Uh it had a color flyer that was about me, sort of a resume you know, about me, telling them about my experience and how I'm, you know, great at probate and all this stuff, even though I had never done a probate. And it had the gift. Now, one of the things that I found out was most valuable, the most valuable gift that I gave, it wasn't the ones to the attorneys. It was the ones that I gave to the gatekeepers. So when I walked in, I would usually, you know, I'd have the gift for the attorney. And for the gatekeeper, I'd usually have a little candy bar or some snacks of some kind, or I'd give them one of the little desk toys or, you know, whatever, you know, was, was trending at the time. If I could find something that was reasonably priced, right? I heard it over and over and over again. Gee, no one ever gives me a gift. It's always for the attorney. Nobody ever gives me a gift. And oftentimes I'd get asked if I could bring more of those, whatever it was, right? So like one time I brought a gift in um, and there were these little uh, uh, like Nerf um, popper things. You could like shoot them at people across the room and everything. And, <laughs> they, you know, they called me and they said, hey, you know, do you, are you coming by this week? Because kind of, yeah, like I said, it was a routine every week. I'm like, yeah, can you bring some more of those? Everybody in the office is having so much fun playing with those. You know, we'd love to have some more. You, you bet. I brought a whole bunch over, right? And they're popping those things all over the office every time I went in the office. So it was a lot of fun. Um, but again, these people, the, the receptionists, the gatekeepers, the assistants, you know, they became the influencers because, you know, in the beginning, the only reason that I dropped off... Um, uh, um, uh, or, or, or sorry, in the beginning, I only intended to drop off the gifts to attorneys 
because that's who I was trying to get to. And I only started giving little gifts to the receptionist or assistants because I just didn't want to get tossed out of my ear again. That was the only reason. But like I said, I learned something very, very quickly and very valuable that my gifts to the attorneys were merely for name recognition only. That's it. That's all it did. Because they didn't come out and meet me. They would even if I asked for them, they wouldn't come out. They were busy. They were always busy, right? Um, but the gift to the gatekeepers, on the other hand, was a gift to the real influencer. How did I know that? How did I know ultimately that that was the case? And like, and you know, as you're listening to this, are you sitting there going, "Well, instinctually, we know this anyways. We already know this. You're not telling us anything really new." But my question back to you is, well, how have you leveraged that, right? Well, here's how I knew that the gatekeepers were the real influencers because it was only about three weeks, only about three weeks into my route campaign that I got calls, the first two calls from an attorney, okay? Two attorneys called me in, in, in week three. Now, I never spoke to them before, but both of them, said exactly the same thing. My assistant said I should call you. Those, those are the exact words out of both of their mouth. My assistant said I should call you. Now, what did that tell me? What did that tell me? That the assistant was sitting there and because they had a good experience with me and because I was consistent and uh, you know, and I did these little favors for them that when that attorney was sitting there going, oh, well, we got this probate. Gosh, we got to find an agent. We need an agent. I wonder if I should call old, you know, Rick because, you know, he's done them for us for a while. You know, oh, but that last time, eh, you know, he wasn't available, all this, that, whatever, whatever the reason is, you know, the, the, the topic came up and the assistant said, you know what, you, you should really give this Anthony a guy a call. You should really give them a call. And that told me that they were the ones who were the real influencers, right? So as a result, you better believe that the gifts got a little bit better, <laughs> especially during the holidays, especially during the holidays. I made sure to take copious notes about every single person, every single one of those gatekeepers and the attorneys alike, what they liked, what they didn't like, um, their mannerisms, you know, whenever they spoke about family members or other interests and things like that. As a matter of fact, you know, I mean, uh, I remember on a couple couple occasions, you know, in this again during the holidays, one of the receptionists, you know, young lady, was sitting there, and you know, tickle me Elmo was the big thing at the time. This office had they they had already given me, you know, I think three or four transactions. And so, you know, she was saying about, yeah, I can't afford it. And they're, you know, they're too expensive. Everybody's fighting for them and all this stuff. Well, I rounded up a Tickle Me Elmo. The next time I walked in there, uh, I, I handed her that Tickle Me Elmo to give to her daughter. And with tears in her eyes, <laughs> you know, the mileage that I got from that was immense, immense. You know, they, they, they gave me business ongoing forever and the attorney even told me he said you know what what you did you know really really made a difference for her therefore if she's happy we're happy you know uh one lady <laughs> i just remember this uh one lady was telling me about her mother her mother uh and she has problems with her feet and she needed uh you know arch supports you know, and I went out and I found some size eight and a half ladies, you know, arch support insoles, the good ones, you know, I, I think that's the time they cost me 30, 40 bucks for that. And I walked in and I said, Hey, give these to your mother. She was, you know, I mean, her mouth was hanging open. Nobody done that for her. Again, the mileage was very much worth it. So, um, you know, in a short amount of time, just by kind of following this process, I found myself on the speed dial for about 25 of those attorneys. You know, they put me on their speed dial. I was the guy. 
And I can tell you, they kept me busy. Here's a few key tips you want to keep in mind if you start working directly with attorneys is number one, always make the attorney look good at all costs, no matter what, no matter what. Even if that means you falling on your own sword, you make that attorney look good because you make them look bad once and you'll never do business with them again. Okay. And then also here's a, here's a, a little bit of a challenging one sometimes. Never get emotional amidst all the turmoil and the drama that can be involved in the probate process. Don't do it. Don't get emotional. You have to remain solid as a rock. And why? Because when you get emotional, it's enough for the family to be emotional. All right. They just lost a loved one. In some cases, a sudden, not expected. Life was going on. It's a happy day like every other day. Things were good. Boom. 90 degree turn to the left. You know, that they were not expecting or planning for or whatever. And so by you maintaining your emotions, number one, you're not going to make bad decisions. Because it's when you use emotions, it's when you tend to make bad decisions. Number two, um, they can turn to you as the rock and they respect the fact that you maintain your position, you know, your, your, your logical, unemotional position, right? It doesn't mean you can't empathize with them or sympathize with them. It just means that, you know, don't let emotions guide you in making a decision when somebody's crying and screaming at you because of it's not fair and this and that. And you go, okay, we'll do this or that, you know, don't do it. Um, and then no matter what, everyone just thinks you're out for the money, right? Because they've been put into a horrible situation and now you're this person who shows up and I don't care how nice of a person you are, everybody just thinks at some point in time, somebody is going to blame you. If there's more people involved in the family, somebody's going to step in and they're going to throw that one out there. You're just out for the money. Okay. Let it roll off your back. You got to do that. Just remember those key, those key tips because if that comes across again to the attorney, then, um, you know, you won't do business with them again. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I was also told on many occasions by the attorneys and their staff that, you know, they get agents in that stop by regularly and they see them once, maybe twice, but never ever more than that. And this was these 500 people that went to this seminar. And they go, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Probate's great. And they see them once. And then they'll go back again. And they'll go, gosh, I didn't get any business. I went out two whole times. Right? For me to stop by three weeks or more in a row without missing was something special to them. They recognize it. They're like, wow, wait, 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 wait. We saw this guy three times? What, what's happening? What is this? Wait, this guy must be the real, real deal. You know, for some of them, it took five times. For some of them, it took 50 times. You know, and you never know. They may have a solid relationship with a real estate agent. But guess what? That might change. You know, that might change. So understand when I'm telling you about this scenario, and this still works to this day, I've got other techniques and things that I use um, on a regular basis, but this process, getting out there and talking to these people on a regular basis without wavering will get you business, okay? Um, you know, so for me, going back to that seminar, you know, that just confirmed my belief. That confirmed my belief that first day or that, that day when I was at the, at the seminar and, you know, everybody, everybody was bright eyed and bushy tailed, ready to go. I knew that most agents would not stick with it. The, the, the attorneys confirmed it. Their staff confirmed it. You know, yeah, we get letters all the time from real estate agents. They just end up in the trash, you know. Yeah, they come in once or twice. We never see them again. They confirmed it. 
right? And as agents, we're just like everybody else, especially in the internet age, right? We uh, want instant gratification for our efforts, you know? But here's the thing you gotta remember. We are in fact in a high ticket, high referral risk, low respect type of business. It's just what it is. Okay, let me clarify a little bit. High ticket, right? We know we're dealing with homes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Millions in some cases. Okay? High referral risk. So even some of the attorneys that would refer me, that preferred that I would work on their transactions, they still handed out two additional cards. They didn't want the liability that if I mess things up, that you know it would be their fault so we are a high referral risk you know it's one thing to refer somebody to your barber and the guy doesn't do a good job like, eh, they're not going to hold it you know they're not going to hold it against you your friend's not going to hold it against you for referring to a barber but if somebody refers you to a friend and you mess up the the, the sale and it's a horrible experience and they get less money for their house than what they should have gotten, that friendship could be irreparably damaged. That friendship could actually even be, you know, financially challenged. That friend could turn around and sue that other friend and say, because you referred us to that agent, we lost $50,000. We want our $50,000, so we're going to sue you for giving us that referral. You know, and so... Well, we love it. And we ask our clients all the time to give us a referral. You know, think about it. In the back of their head, they're going, eh. You know, if they don't do a good job, you know, if you did a good job for them, they should refer you every day of the week. But the nature of our business. And we're in a low, low respect. You know, I mean, there's things that people, you know, studies that people say, well, on a scale of, you know, between doctors and used car salesmen, where do real estate agents fit? It's usually right above used car salesmen. Just is what it is, guys, because people don't understand the level of work, the type of commitment that we have to have for those of us who are professional in the business, right? And we also have a low bar of entry, I think you would have to agree. So it's easy for people to get in, and therefore it's easy for people to you know mess things up. But I don't care what industry in, you're, that, that's the case anywhere. I've been to plenty of really lousy doctors, okay? And... I've been plenty of, or, or talked to plenty of lousy attorneys as well who have been to school for eight years. Just because they have education doesn't mean they're great, okay? Anyway, so the attorneys and other people, they started referring to me as, quote unquote, the probate agent, you know? The attorneys would refer to their, to their clients. Hey, you know, you need, you need to talk to the probate agent. We'd be in court, okay, who has the information on this? Oh, that's the probate agent. You know, the executors, well, you need to talk to the probate agent. It was just kind of funny. It was just like a phrase that they all kept using. And one of my attorneys, he said, you know, you should put up a website or something. So I did, you know, years ago. It's been up for a long, long time. Depending on when you look at it, the probateagent.com, it might have been revised to, you know, for, um, you know, the shift that we're doing. Uh, if you're looking at it at the time that this, podcast is uh, uploaded, you know, you're going to see exactly how I used it before for, uh, you know, creating and maintaining that credibility as the probate agent. And, uh, but it's, it's being transformed. So anyway, um, yeah, they started calling me the probate agent. So, you know, that's what, it, that's <laughs> what it is. Um, I started getting invited to brown bag lunches. That's those things that attorneys do. They'll get together, like their specialty will get together. You know, estate attorneys will get together. I get invited to parties by attorneys and by other people. I get invited as a keynote speaker to different groups of attorneys and investors, right? So this was all going on. This was all going on in this process as a result of the work that I was doing. And I did hard, I worked hard to maintain those relationships. I worked hard, you know. Um, it, you know, got to the point where, you know, I was I was dropping off, I was doing the occasional pizza party for the office, or I was dropping off donuts first thing in the morning, or 
or whatever. And these are for established relationships. But, you know, you can't just go, okay, well, I got, I'm getting deals from them now and I never talk to them. You know, no, you have to maintain the relationship. And that is part of the plan that you have to plan out every single, you know, week or month or year for how you're going to keep doing this. And I ran with these people for a solid five years, solid five years that this was going on. I slowed down my route because, um, you know, I did maintain those key people on my list, uh, but I but I wanted to add. So I kept going on my route but it wasn't as frequent, not as many offices. I, I kind of, I, I kind of, um, yeah, I, I like wanted to target certain people on that list instead of targeting everybody at that point in time. I think I narrowed it down to probably 30 or 40. And so I'd still hit them because like any business, there's attrition, right? You'll lose a few attorneys from time to time. They move, they die, they this, that, whatever, go out of business. It doesn't matter, whatever. You're going to lose some. So you got to keep adding to the list, right? And that's what I did. You know, just because you get some relationships, you don't just go, ah, cool, I'm set. So you got to keep that as part of your plan too. Now, things were great. Uh, I even got to the point where um, everywhere I went, I was in my very own limo. Yes, I owned a limousine, had my name and my picture and everything on the side. I know, I know it was cheesy marketing, but it was fun. And, you know, a lot of clients appreciated it and that sort of thing. And then it happened. Then it happened. The big market crash in 2007. Combined with internet sales, it changed the landscape of how real estate would be done going forward, at least in our modern times. I mean, it really did. It made a big difference in how our business is done. In fact, I'm gonna tell you something. Um, <clears throat> as a result of that shift, about a half of the attorneys that were sending me business on a regular basis either ended up getting disbarred or in some cases, a couple of them ended up facing jail time over the next couple of years. I'm going to tell you more about that in our next episode. Hey, thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe right here where you're listening to us right now and any of your other social media platforms and leave feedback for me it's really important to me and it helps us out do you have a question that you want answered live on the show go to theprobateagent.com to submit your question or even to get an opportunity to be interviewed for my agent friends you'll also find additional content and some freebies there that you can download right now until next time let's put the pro back into probate